Good morning from Universal Orlando Resort with Halloween Horror Nights fast approaching. We figured maybe there was a few of you guys that have never been to the event or don't know anything about it. So we wanted to come and kind of give you guys an overview, tell you guys where the houses and scare zones are, and maybe give you guys a few tips and tricks along the way. For those of you guys that are curious as to what Halloween Horror Nights is, it is described as the nation's premier Halloween event. And what Universal Orlando does is they transform their park into a scary place. Basically, if when you think Halloween, you think I want to be scared of things and scary movies and things like that, Halloween Horror Nights is your place to come. This year, Halloween Horror Nights has 10 haunted houses and five scare zones. Halloween Horror Nights runs from September 14th through November 3rd, only on select nights, usually like Wednesday through Sunday or Thursday through Sunday, depending on what time of year it is. And what we'll do is we'll put a link to Halloween Horror Nights website down below so you guys can see all of the dates and plan your trip around that. It also bears mentioning that although this is a Halloween event and there are other Halloween events around Orlando that allow you to wear costumes, Halloween Horror Nights does not allow any kind of costume whatsoever. They're very strict about this. Also during Halloween Horror Nights, they are more strict about letting people in with wallet chains or with large decorative metal necklaces. So if you like to wear a large metal necklace or a wallet chain, be sure to leave that in the car if you're coming to Halloween Horror Nights. One of the questions that we get asked often is what passes are you going to get? There are a lot of different options for passes. One of the ones that we like to get is the Frequent Fear Pass, which is kind of like a season pass and it gives you select dates that you can go, but you can go multiple times or they have one day passes and stuff like that. And we'll put a link to all of the passes down in the description down below so you guys can see what dates are available for what passes and which pass will work best for you guys. Now that we've got some of the ground rules out of the way, let's head in and have a look around. The very first tip that I have for you guys is if you are staying on property, there is a separate entrance for people that are staying at a universal hotel. So the entrance for all of the other guests that are not staying on site is through this large arch, straight up to the turnstiles. But if you are staying on site, be sure to bring your room key and have a room key for everybody in your party and come through this group sales archway. The group sales archway will lead you up to this guest services area where you can talk to them about any issues that you're having with your tickets, pick up tickets, or if you did it through will call, you can go up to one of the kiosks and use your credit card that you used to buy your tickets to print out and pick up your tickets. But if you use the special hotel entrance, you'll come around the side of this building over in this direction. So there's the archway back there, and this is only during Halloween Horror Nights, or if you're coming in as like part of a group or something like that. But this is where you will enter into the park, is over here at these gates, right there. So one of the drawbacks of this side entrance, although you do get to get in a little bit quicker, you do miss the, what are called the opening scaremonies, which happen in front of the main turnstiles right before Halloween Horror Nights opens. There is a little show that kind of welcomes you into Halloween Horror Nights, usually with a lot of chainsaws and people yelling and people running around. So although you miss the opening ceremonies over at the hotel only entrance, it is a little bit easier than going through these because these always get pretty intense with lines right when Halloween Horror Nights opens. This area just inside of the turnstiles is actually where the opening ceremonies would be taking place, kind of right here in the street. Before we get too far into the park, I wanted to kind of tell you guys another time-saving tip, and that is an area here called Stay and Scream. If you have a day pass to the park, if you're visiting Universal Studios during the day, and you have a Halloween Horror Nights ticket, you can actually stay in the park during the conversion over to Halloween Horror Nights. You just have to be in what are called Stay and Scream areas. The first one is over here in front of the Hello Kitty store, and that'll get you into maybe like one or two houses before the general crowd comes in. So it's always a good thing if you can do that. It works out well for those of us with annual passes because we just come in and go right to the Stay and Scream area, and then we can get through two houses with two or three houses without any weight at all, or a very small weight. And what we'll do is we will go through all of the houses and scare zones, and then we will come back to each individual Stay and Scream area and tell you which house it should be going to first because you don't get to go to any house. You have to go to the house that they tell you to go to. The first scary thing that we come to is called a scare zone. And this is an area of the park where the scare actors or the people that are going to be scaring you are just out and about in the streets. You don't have to go stand in line to experience this scare. You're just walking through the street here and there will be scare actors all around. The first scare zone is in this area of the park called Plaza of the Stars in between Shrek 4D and Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, and this scare zone is called The Harvest. An old barn holds horrors from each of our houses. Foul creatures lurk between the hay bales, 
ready for a harvest of blood and screams. So basically what that means is that this area will have different characters from each of the different houses here, which are the ones that you will stand in line for. And we're gonna go over those as we go. This area would be your first introduction to the Halloween Horror Nights experience and you will get to see different characters from each of the different haunted houses that are around the park in this one location. So after you pass through the harvest, you come to your first haunted house, and this will be the most popular haunted house in the park, and the entrance will be right here for Stranger Things. So I'm sure you guys know all about Stranger Things. It's a pretty popular Netflix show. Halloween Horror Nights description says, Halloween Horror Nights takes you deep inside the haunting world of Stranger Things. The Demogorgon is hunting in our world now. Ooh, that sounds awesome. So I'm sure you'll get to go into the Upside Down. You can see some Demogorgons, maybe see 11. Hopefully there'll be some Egos around. As with every Halloween Horror Night, they put the most popular intellectual property or what we call IP at the front of the park so that the most people know where it's at. This will be the most popular house in all of Halloween Horror Nights with consistently long wait times. That is where the Stay and Scream area and Express comes into. We haven't talked about Express yet, but one of the things that will help out with wait times is Express. One thing that should be noted about the Express Pass is that it doesn't give you zero wait. The Express Pass does is it cuts your wait time in half. So if there is a posted 60 minute wait for Stranger Things, you should have about a 30 minute or less wait time in Express. So keep that in mind when buying the Express. I do think that you could get through all of the houses without Express, but it will be a rush and you might not be able to take time in the scare zones or see a show or something like that. We will put a link in the description down below so you guys can see the cost of Express Pass and it is expensive, but in my opinion, I think it's worth it, but you can get it done without Express Pass. I also think that it is important to note that it depends on what day of the week you go. And this is something that we get asked all the time is what is the best day to go? And that's really hard to say because it seems to change every year. Last year, for whatever reason, I felt like Thursdays were the busiest day and Saturdays were the least busy day. I don't know. It's a very strange, but the year before, Saturdays were the busiest day. Another thing to note about Halloween Horror Nights is some of the rides will be open and some will not. So take, for instance, Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon will not be open this year during Halloween Horror Nights. And that brings us to our next Halloween Horror Nights experience, which will be another house called Carnival Graveyard Rust in Pieces, which will actually enter into the line somewhere around here and you'll go backstage through the extended queue of Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York there at the Metropolis Tribune. But I think the actual entrance will be around the front entrance to Jimmy Fallon somewhere. Carnival Graveyard Rust in Pieces is described as the caramel-coated carnivals of yesteryear have died, but something sinister has festered, waiting to torment those who trespass upon their salvage yard. Which sounds absolutely amazing. It sounds like they went out and got a whole bunch of old carnival rides and created an old broke-down carnival that is haunted which sounds like it's gonna be so much fun. So after Carnival Graveyard, we come upon the entrance to two more haunted houses, and both entrances will be in this area right here, kind of right in front of the New York Public Library, and you'll go backstage to the sound stages back there. The two haunted houses that will be back here will be Scary Tales, Deadly Ever After, and Poltergeist, which both sound like they're gonna be a lot of fun. Their description of Scary Tales, Deadly Ever After is, the Wicked Witch of the West has cursed the land of the fairies, twisting beloved stories beyond recognition. There are no fairy tale endings here. Ooh, yeah. And for Poltergeist, restless spirits have overrun the infamous house atop a cemetery and will lure you into a place between life and death. Don't get lost in the light. So these two house entrances that are here are notorious for being kind of all over the place for wait times. I think Poltergeist will draw in a large crowd, but in years past, both the houses that are here have fluctuated tremendously throughout the night as far as their wait time goes. So first thing when the event opens, it might have a high wait time, and then in the middle of the night, it might be a low wait time. So always check, and I believe that the wait times will be in the app as soon as the event opens. As we turn past the entrance to Scary Tales and Poltergeist, we head into New York and another scare zone. This scare zone will be Vamp 85 New Year's Eve. As the ball drops in New York City, this New Year's bash is about to bite, literally. This scare zone is the sequel to a very popular scare zone from last year called Vamp 55. The premise around this is that there is a New Year's Eve bash and right at the stroke of midnight, all of the vampires go on a feeding frenzy. So there's going to be 
a midnight celebration happening here in this care zone every 30 minutes. Should be pretty fun. We always like to see this stuff. This is for Halloween Horror Nights, and you can see they're all dressed up in their 80s outfits. Oh, this is neat. It's very much like Miami Vice. There's a little dog in there. One of the rides that will be open during Halloween Horror Nights is Revenge of the Mummy. You'll have to excuse the music. There's an acapella show going on over there. Another real quick tip about the Express Pass is that your Express Pass does work for the rides, and I believe it's unlimited use on the rides. It is only one time use per house per night of Halloween Horror Nights. So some of the season passes like Frequent Fear and Rush of Fear and stuff like that do offer an express option and that is one use per house per night. And then if you get a single night ticket, you can also get express for that single night ticket and that is one use per house for that one night that you have to take it for. This is a different Express Pass than you would purchase during the day. So if you purchase an Express Pass during the day at Universal, that Express Pass will not work during Halloween Horror Nights. And the on-site hotels that offer free Express that you can use during the day, that Express is not able to be used at night. So Vamp 85 will be the largest scare zone in the park this year. It actually runs all the way down the length of New York from the Tribune building there ahead of us, all the way down here to Louis and the Lou Wasserman statue here at the end of the road. And that leads us into our next scare zone, which will be one of my favorites, just past the Starbucks here. It's gonna be Killer Clowns from Outer Space. An interstellar circus tent has landed on South Street. At this Circus of Fear, the joke's always on you. And I love it. They've already started putting out props for Killer Clowns. This gigantic sign. Looks like some sort of alien spacecraft, but also clown things. And then we've got two other pallets back here that are just covered up with some camouflage tarps. But I have a feeling they will be part of this sign, possibly. Another fun thing that's gonna be happening is if you see this box right here, that is a projector that is part of the cinematic celebration. And we know that the cinematic celebration will not be running during Halloween Horror Nights, but we did find out that those projectors are gonna be used with their map projection function to be able to project the killer clowns from outer space, circus tent, spaceship, up here and Every 30 minutes or so, there is going to be a liftoff of the circus tent, and it's gonna be amazing because they're gonna do this through map projection using these projectors here. While we're in this area of the park, I wanted to point out two more rides that will be open during Halloween Horror Nights, and that is Transformers and Rip Ride Rocket. And of course, Universal's newest ride, Fast and Furious Supercharged, will be open during Halloween Horror Nights. Side note, there's a construction wall out here or close to Richter's. I don't know what this is for. Probably just some like minor fixes or improvements. And because Fast and Furious Supercharged will be open during Halloween Horror Nights, the San Francisco area where there was a scare zone last year will not have a scare zone this year because this is the exit to Fast and Furious Supercharged. So there's not really enough room for a ride exit and a scare zone over here. Now we are headed into an interesting part of the park because all of London and the waterfront here is open during Halloween Horror Nights. The Hogwarts Express is not, but Diagon Alley is open during Halloween Horror Nights and you can ride Escape from Gringotts. And actually during Halloween Horror Nights is probably one of the times that you'll be able to ride Escape from Gringotts with the shortest wait because most people don't go into Diagon Alley and you might even be able to get some good pictures without very many people in Diagon Alley. From the London waterfront we are turning in this direction and heading over towards the fear factor stage to the one and only show that is going to be happening during Halloween Horror Nights. This in years past was the location of the Bill and Ted show which is no longer at Halloween Horror Nights and it has been replaced with the Academy of Villains show and their show is going to be called Academy of Villains Cyberpunk. With a wicked mix of dance, acrobatics, and theatrics, this talented crew is back for an all-new performance of Pounding Synths and Neon Lights. So the idea of Pounding Synths and Neon Lights kind of brings to light the idea that this year's Halloween Horror Nights is an 80s theme. So it might not be everything from the 80s, but I believe that most things in the event do have a tie into the 80s. Take for instance, Cyberpunk having synth and neon in it, and then Vamp 85 and Poltergeist. A lot of different 80s themes coming through. From Academy of Villains, we come across our next house entrance, which will be the Horrors of Blumhouse. And that'll just be right behind this gate here. Witness a college student try to break the murderous cycle of Happy Death Day and enter the brutal world of the first purge. There was a Blumhouse themed house back here last year, and it sort of looks like we're gonna have the same facade, which is just the Blumhouse logo 
with some projection mapping on it. And of course, the best air conditioning in the park at Men in Black Alien Attack will be open for Halloween Horror Nights to soak up some AC. Here near the Men in Black bathrooms is the entrance to two more houses. These are the two tent houses that are back there. And the one on the left will be called Slaughter Cinema, and the one on the right will be called Dead Exposure Patient Zero. For Slaughter Cinema, it's showtime at the local drive-in where you don't just catch a movie, the movie catches you. When the credits roll, heads roll. For Dead Exposure Patient Zero, the fear will infect you, plunging you into darkness against the plague of swarming, fast-moving zombies. And in keeping with the 80s theme, Dead Exposure Patient Zero does take place in Paris in the 80s. So the other thing that's interesting about these two houses that are back here is that both exits for these two houses are right here. So you can go into one, come out, and then go right into the other. Also, there is a house entrance that is over near Barney, and we're going to get to that next that will exit out over here so you go into that one in barney there's actually two there's one by et one by barney and then there's these two over here so you go into the house at et it exits near barney you go in barney it exits over here you go into dead exposure it exits over here you go into slaughter cinema it exit over exits over here then you can go into blumhouse so there's kind of an order that you can do things to keep your walking down to a minimum. With that being said, that is something that should be noted is that there are two different paths that you can choose when you can come into the park. The first path is the path that we took through the harvest, which was the very first scare zone that we saw in the direction of Stranger Things. The other path is you can make a right into Hollywood, which we are gonna end up at at the end of this video. Kind of a couple of different paths that you can take. If you want to, when you first get into the park, run all the way back to Slaughter Cinema and Dead Exposure, and those will be the shortest waits as soon as the event opens. And you will have to do a little bit of backtracking, but you go into those two, and then you can head over to the two that are over by E.T. and Barney. Speaking of when the park first opens, this is another Stay and Scream location. Here in Duff Gardens or in the Simpsons area, there is a Stay and Scream area that will get you into the two houses that are back by E.T. and Barney first. This is also one of the hottest Stay and Scream areas because there's not really any shade back here and they kind of corral you in front of Bumblebee Man tacos. Speaking of The Simpsons, I did want to mention that The Simpsons ride will not be open during Halloween Horror Nights, but Moe's and Duff Gardens definitely will be. And during the Halloween season, they have a specialty beer. It's called Dufftoberfest. So as we head out of the Springfield area, we are heading past Animal Actors and into Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone which is actually a really kind of funny place to be heading to show off Halloween Horror Night stuff. So before we get too far into Kid Zone, I wanted to point out that just past SpongeBob Store Pants is the Kid Zone Pizza Company. And last year there was a specialty food item here called pizza fries, basically French fries topped with pizza toppings. So something you should be on the lookout for is they always have specialty food items. Pizza fries was a new thing for last year, and that was at this location. But all throughout the park, you will find different food stands and different drink stands where you can get specialty food, specialty drinks in souvenir cups. And if you get the souvenir cup, you do get cheaper refills on beers and drinks like that. And you can bring your souvenir cup back for multiple days. So if you come on the opening day and you buy a souvenir cup, you can bring that souvenir cup back every night and get cheaper refills on your drinks. So over here at the entrance to E.T. Adventure will actually be the entrance to Trigger Treat. With that being said, E.T. Adventure will not be open during Halloween Horror Nights, but the description of Trick or Treat reads, this terrifying house is breaking all the rules of our Halloween tradition. So last year at Halloween Horror Nights, we had a Trick or Treat scare zone, and it was one of the most popular scare zones in the park, and that was in the Central Park area. And we'll put in some clips from last year's scare zone so you can kind of get an idea of what the house will be like, but the house will definitely be more in-depth and more developed than the scare zone was last year. From the ET entrance and Trick or Treat, we head over here into the Barney area, which will be the entrance to Seeds of Extinction. Humanity is extinct, wiped out by a cataclysmic meteor. In its wake, something monstrous has taken root. This will be kind of like evil plants, like murderous plants, kind of like Little Shop of Horrors, I would imagine, but more uh, violent. And then also you can expect there to be a lot of foliage and people dressed up like the foliage and coming out at you. And that brings us to the order of houses that will result in the least amount of walking will be Trick or Treat, which exits over here. Then you go into Seeds of Extinction, which exits over by Dead Exposure. Then you come out of Dead Exposure, which exits over by Slaughter Cinema. 
Then you come out of Slaughter Simna, which exits by its entrance, and you go over to Blumhouse. It's a pretty good path to hit a bunch of houses with not a lot of walking. As we leave the kid zone area, we're headed over here to Central Park, and this area actually has a lot of decorations up because it will be a scare zone called Twisted Tradition. An ancient evil has been reawakened and transformed Halloween into an abomination. Well, that sounds frightening. I love this. I love it when it's the time of year where all of the props are out and about for the different scare zones. This is amazing. And I love that they're like all old and rotten and stuff like that. Oh, it's so cool. I like this. This kind of looks like it would be a spot where a scarecrow would be sitting. I also love the juxtaposition of Superstar Parade happening in the background while I'm going through and showing you guys scary tractors, scary. So I know that this tractor is all old and rusty, but it kind of looks like it still runs. There is something very large here, a wagon that is covered up. And usually when they're covered up during the day, that means that there is some form of blood or gore or like a mannequin that's supposed to be a dead body on top of this. So we won't get to see this until the opening night of Horror Nights. Fun fact about Halloween Horror Nights, most of the backstories of Halloween Horror Nights reference the town of Cary, Ohio. So if you ever look into any of the history of Halloween Horror Nights or the lore of Hall Halloween Horror Nights, you'll see Cary, Ohio mentioned very, very often. As a matter of fact, I believe that Slaughter Cinema is based in Cary, Ohio. In our last Halloween Horror Nights update video, which we'll put a link to up in the corner here, we mentioned that these lights here in Hollywood are pointed at an area that had a stage in it last year. And there's a stage there now, but unfortunately this is not for Halloween Horror Nights. This is actually for Rock the Universe. They will take this down before Halloween Horror Nights because we did get confirmation that there is only one show and that is Academy of Villains Cyberpunk. And that brings us to Hollywood, which is the location of the last scare zone or the first, depending on which direction you head when you enter the park, because we are back near the front of the park again. And this will be Revenge of Chucky. Chucky, the world's deadliest doll, has brought a toy fair to gruesome life on the streets of Hollywood. Twisting children's toys into nightmares, you'll be dying to play. So recently there was a live stream with all of the creative minds behind Halloween Horror Nights. And in that live stream, they mentioned that they were able to take this scare zone and draw inspiration from childhood toys. So toys that they enjoyed playing with as a child or toys that maybe you or I enjoyed playing with as a child. But they have since been possessed and are on the attack. Sounds kind of scary, but I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. They also mentioned that Chucky will be a puppet. There's olive oil. Oh, hi. Hello. I was following you. <laughs> Thank you, Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Popeye's not here, so Why I'm not? looking for a new sailor. Why is Popeye not here? Well, he's sailing. Oh, well, that Obviously. makes sense. So, but did, are you looking for another sailor? Yes. Does it have to be a sailor? No. What I'm do you not, do? Oh, I, I mean, I do this. I talk to a camera. You talk to a camera? I'm ready for my close-up. One of the other reasons that I love coming here during the day and talking about Halloween Horror Nights because we get lovely intermissions from olive oil like that. As I was saying, the Chucky will be a puppet and there should be some form of stage or something set up. And we can kind of see some of the beginnings of that here. When you come into this scare zone, Chucky will be actual size. Oh no, there goes Scoob. And that brings us to the location of the final Halloween Horror Nights maze. And that is right here in the Shrek building. They have actually taken out one of the theaters of Shrek and turned it into a house. And this will be Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Evil has returned in an all-new house. Michael Myers is unstoppable, and there's nowhere to hide. So in the beginning of the video, one of the things that we mentioned was stay and scream areas. So stay and scream areas are areas that if you are already in the park and you have a Universal Orlando ticket and you have a Horror Nights ticket for that night, you can stay in the park while they switch over from regular day guests and they clear out the whole park to Halloween Horror Nights. So there are three different stay and scream areas, at least there have been in years past, and I believe it should be the same for this year. There's Hello Kitty, Finnegan's, and the Simpsons area. So in my opinion, Hello Kitty is the best because you can watch the opening ceremonies, which take place kind of back here by the entrance to the park. You can go inside the Hello Kitty store, which is air conditioning, and you get to go to the most popular house first, which will be Stranger Things. That's why I think that this stay and scream area is the best. A lot of other people think that Finnegan's is the best because it's a bar. You can go in, there's air conditioning, you can get a drink, 
and hang out in there. Finnegan's should go over to uh, Carnival Graveyard first, if not Carnival Graveyard, then to Scary Tales or Poltergeist first. And then the last area is the Springfield area, which I think is probably, in my opinion, the worst area because there is no cover. You can go to Moe's, but it's not, it's, it's kind of confusing and it's not as easy to do as these other areas to get some air conditioning. And that Stay and Scream area will take you over to Trick or Treat and Seeds of Extinction. So it should be noted that in the past, they have switched around the house that you go to for the Hello Kitty Stay and Scream area. They might take you to Halloween 4 over here at the Shrek building, which is just kind of to my left, just past Hello Kitty right there. And they might take you to Stranger Things. So when you first get to the Stay and Scream area, ask around and see if they can tell you which house you're going to and then pick your Stay and Scream area based on that. Another large part of Halloween Horror Nights is the merch. And there are two main locations where you can get Halloween Horror Nights merch. Here in the Universal Store, as soon as you come into the park and just before the Harvest Scare Zone. And here in the New York area at the I. Stein and Company storefront, this will be the Halloween Horror Nights store. So in the Universal, in the Universal Studios store, You'll get other items like Universal items in here. You will only get Halloween Horror Nights items. As we make our way back to the front of the park, I was passing by Music Plaza here, and I wanted to point out that during Halloween Horror Nights, there will be carnival games here set up, so you could win Halloween-themed prizes. Also, over here at Monsters Cafe, they offer what is called Scaractor Dining, which happens just before the event starts. And during Scare Actor Dining, you get a buffet and you get to eat while the Scare Actors are roaming around, giving you plenty of photo opportunities and you get a free photo to take home. So last year we didn't get to do Scare Actor Dining, but the year before we did. And what we'll do is we'll put a link up in the corner and in the description down below of a video where we went and did Scare Actor Dining so you guys can see what it is all about. Do have to mention though, Scare Actor Dining is a separate ticket. So, to do Scare Actor Dining, you have to pay for the Scare Actor Dining and have a ticket to Halloween Horror Nights. One of the things that we put in the description down below is the link to Halloween Horror Nights, the website, and that'll give you information about all the tickets and various tours, express passes, stuff like that. That brings me to one of my other time-saving things. If you only have one night here and money is no option, the RIP tour is fantastic. It gets you to the front line at every house, you can go through each house once, you can go through each house multiple times, and there are various different RIP tours where you can do a private one or a group one. The group one, you kind of have to do a voting system to see where everybody wants to go. The private tour, if you really like Stranger Things, you could go through Stranger Things nonstop, all night, no wait if you wanted to. Those RIP tours do include dinner, so it is a little bit of a deal, but it still is very expensive. One of the other tours that is available for Halloween Horror Nights that I do recommend for somebody that might be a little bit scared of Halloween Horror Nights is the Unmasking the Horror Tours. And those happen during the day while the event is not happening and there are no scare actors in the houses and the houses all have the lights on. And they walk you through the houses with the lights on so you can get a look at what the scenic artists do in there and get an idea for how the house is without anybody jumping out and scaring you. That's one of our favorite tours to do, so I highly recommend that one. That is the tour that Jen did first because at first she was scared to go to Halloween Horror Nights. Now she's not, she's used to it, but when we first started getting her to go, we did the Unmasking the Horror Tour and that helped her get over her fear. Maybe that might work for you guys if you guys are scared of Halloween Horror Nights. So I'm very excited for Halloween Horror Nights. It's gonna run from September 14th through November 3rd I think that it is going to be a fantastic event this year. I'm excited for the 80s theme. I'm excited for Carnival Graveyard. I think that's going to be a very fun house. I'm excited for Slaughter Cinema. I'm excited for Stranger Things. I think that it's going to be interesting seeing how they pull that off. I believe I heard somewhere that it's going to only be season one. I am also excited for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I cannot wait to see how they do the clowns, how they do the masks, and how big they are going to be because in the movie they were very large. So I'm excited to see what they're gonna look like in real life. Also, for those of you guys that have never been to a Halloween Horror Nights event and are interested to see what they're like, we'll put some links to various videos from years past in the description down below. That was our overview of Halloween Horror Nights and what to expect when you show up at the event this year. So with that being said, we are off. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.